Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. All right, chapter 2-8 is present value of an investment. Okay, so present value of a single deposit investment, present value of a periodic deposit investment. So we're looking at two different things. Um, example one says, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson know that in six years, okay, so six years, their daughter, Anne, will attend State College. She will need about $20,000 for her first year's tuition. How much should the Johnsons deposit into an account that yields one and a half percent interest compounded annually in order to have that amount? Okay, so in this situation, we are not saying, okay, we have this, um, this much money and we're going to put it into the account. How much will it make by this time? We want to know how much to put in at the beginning to get to a particular goal. And that's what this lesson's about today. So it's still going to be the um, interest formula that is B equals, and it's P times one, whoops, it's P times one plus R over N to the power of NT. Okay, so we, what we want to find is we have B, we have P, we have R, we have N, and we have T. Okay, so the thing that's changing here is we are trying to find a balance to start with to give us a particular um, balance at the end, I mean. So our P is what we are trying to find. We want $20,000 when this matures. So we want 20,000, that's our B. P is what we're looking for. The rate is 0.015. N is compounded annually, so that's a one. And T time is six years. So these are all of our factors that we're plugging into this equation, but we know, we know B, we wanna find P. So usually what we do in math is we want to solve for the variable uh, that is in question. So I'm going to get rid of everything that is on the right side with P because we want P to be isolated. And when I do that, what I'm going to do is divide both sides by one plus R over N to the N. T. So one plus R over N to the NT and one plus R over N to the NT is going to simplify to one. So we get P times one or simply P. So this is going to give us P equals and it's going to end up with the other side, which is B divided by one plus R over N to the power of NT. So this is the formula we're going to use to find the present value of the function or of the loan in this, or not loan, but um, investment account that will give us $20,000. So the B is 20,000 divided by one plus our rate, which is 0 0.015 divided by N, which is one in this case. So that'd be one times six. So when I plug that into my calculator, I get 20,000 divided by parentheses one plus, now 0.015 over one is just 0.015. So I'm just gonna put that in to the power of six times one, which is simply six and hit enter. So I need $18,290.84, $18,290.84. That is what I need to put into the account in order for it to be worth $20,000 in six years. Okay, so now it says check your understanding. How much would the Johnsons have to deposit into the account Okay, so again, how much deposit, how much deposited is going to be our B if they want to save for two years worth of tuition. 
Okay, so there's the key there. This is my actually my second time going through this video because I messed that up. Um, I thought it meant in two years and that's our time. No, they want two years worth of tuition. So be careful how things are worded. Uh, two years worth of tuition. Well, if the first year is 20,000, let's just assume the second year is also 20,000. So two times 20,000 is $40,000. So now they want two years worth of tuition in the same amount of time. So let me just scroll back up here. So now our B in this case is going to be $40,000, two years of tuition. We're still looking for P. Our R is still 0.015. Our N is still compounded annually. And our time is still six. So we're going to use the formula that we derived, which is right here. So we write P equals B divided by one plus R over N to the power of N T. So then that is going to give us, when we substitute in $40,000 divided by one plus 0.015 over one to the power of one times six. So when I put that in the calculator, let's do a shortcut here. I'm going to hit second entry and bring back my last uh, equation. The only thing that's changing is the 20,000 in the numerator. So instead of typing this all back in, I'm just gonna hit second entry, bring back the old equation and change that 20,000 to 40,000 and hit enter. So I'm going to need 36,581.69, 36,581. 0.69. So in order to have $40,000 in six years, they would have to put 36,581.69 into the account today at 1.5% interest compounded annually. Okay, example two. Let me get my highlighter out. Ratika just graduated from college. She wants $100,000 in her savings account after 10 years. How much must she deposit in the account now at 0.095% interest rate compounded daily in order to meet this goal? Round up to the nearest dollar. Okay, so always read that last sentence and make sure you're giving your answer in the right measure. Okay, so Rikita, Rikita just graduated from college. She wants 100 grand in her savings account after 10 years. So I'm going to write B equals P equals R equals N equals T equals over here. The balance that she wants is the future balance $100,000. The time is 10. 10 years. 0.095. 0.95%, 0.0095. Okay, move the decimal two places to the left. Okay, 0 0.0095. Okay. And then compounded daily, the number of compounds per year is N, is 365. So there it is. So we write P equals B divided by one plus R over N to the power of NT. Substitute 100,000 dollars to the power divided by one plus R point zero zero nine five. That's a really bad interest rate, by the way, divided by 365 to the power of 365 times 10 years. So that is going to give us an approximation. Remember, we're rounding, so it's approximation to the nearest dollar. All right, so let's see, 100,000. Let's just clear this and start fresh. 100,000 divided by one plus 0 0.0095 divide 365, close the parentheses to the power of 
Three, six, five times 10 is three, six, five, zero. Hit enter and it's 90,937. And 0.40 is less than 50 cents and it said round up to the nearest dollar. So they, even though that's a four, we want to round up. So it's 909.38. $90,938, okay? So that's how much she wants to put into her account now. She wants 100 grand in 10 years at this very sad interest rate. So the question I'm asking is, if she just graduated from college, where is she getting $90,000 to put into an account? I must have done something wrong because I didn't have that money when I graduated college, but anyway. Okay, so for the check your understanding, all it's asking is how does the equation in example two change if the interest is compounded weekly? So if we go back up and look at what we did here, the only thing that is going to change is going to be, um, we have P equals, I'm looking at right here, the $100,000 didn't change, okay? The one plus doesn't change, the rate doesn't change, what changes is 365 changes to 52. So our equation is going to look like so. Let's bring this over like that. And it's going to be the power of 52 times 10. So the only thing that changed was our N. Okay, and that's the answer to that. It didn't ask how much it was. It just says, how did the equation change? Okay, example three. This one's a little bit more complex, but it's not bad. We just need to adjust. Uh, it says, Nick wants to install central air conditioning in his home in three years. He estimated the total cost to be $15,000. How much must he deposit monthly into an account that pays 1.4% interest compounded monthly in order to have enough money. So we're going to use the formula B equals P times one plus R over N to the power of N T minus one. Okay. All divided by R over N. Okay, but in this case, we want to know what P is. Okay, we're trying to find P. So I wanna solve for P first. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by R over N. Okay, and that will cancel the R over N here and put R over N over on this side and multiply. So the first step, we're going to get B times R over N equals P times one plus R over N to the power of N T minus one, okay? Then we're going to divide this whole thing by one plus R over N to the N T minus one, okay? And these are gonna cancel, and what you do to one side, obviously you have to do the other. So we're gonna divide this side by one, plus R divided by N to the N T minus one. Okay, so when, that, when we do that, these are going to cancel and we're gonna be left with this on the left. So I'll rewrite that as P equals B times R divided by N all over one plus R over N to the power of NT minus one. Okay, so there's our formula. We need P, I'm sorry, we need B, P, R, N, and T. Okay, so B is the cost that the balance we're going to end up with. So we know B in this case, $15,000. This is what we're trying to find P. So that's why we solve this equation for P. 1.4% uh, 1. 1. is 0. 0.014. 
n is monthly, so that's 12, and we want to know what's going to happen in three years. So this is going to equal 15,000 times 0.014 divided by 12, divided by 1 plus 0.014 divided by 12 to the power of 12 times 3 minus 1. Okay, so there's our formula. So I'm going to put that in my calculator. Okay, so 15,000 times, and I'll put parentheses, 0 0.014 divided by 12. And I'm going to hit enter here just so I don't have to worry about uh, parentheses around my numerator. So there's my numerator, 17.5. Now I'm going to hit divide parentheses, parentheses, one plus 0.014 divided by 12, close the parentheses, to the power of 12 times three. I could put 12 times three or just 36. Arrow out minus one, close the parentheses, enter. Okay, so I got, and it says round up to the nearest hundred dollars. Okay, so, that's pretty drastic. That's rounding up $91.88. Um, I'm gonna change this to the nearest hundred dollars because just because you're over by a few bucks, um, let's get rid of this hundred dollars. Round up to the nearest $10. How about, okay, we wanna be close but we don't want to be under. So 408 is not enough. 409 would be enough. So let's just say approximately $410 would have to be deposited into the account every month for three years along with that interest. Okay, so that's how you do this one. Now check your understanding. It says write the formula to find the present value of an X dollar balance that is reached by periodic investments made semi-annually for Y years at an interest rate of R. All right, so now they're just telling us to come up with a general formula. So I'm gonna write B equals P equals R equals N equals and T equals. Okay, present value of X dollars. Well, what's the present value? Okay, present value of X dollars. So we're going to, let me just write the formula that we just came up with. So over here, I'll put P equals B times R over N divided by one plus R over N to the N T minus one. There's the formula. And what did they give us? Well, our present it says right the front on the present value of an X dollar balance. So we want to come up with X dollars at the end reached by a periodic investment made semi-annually. So our N is two for Y years. So T is going to be Y at an interest rate of R. So we're just, the only thing they gave us was N equals two. Okay. So that is going to become P equals X times R over two divided by one plus R over two to the power of two Y minus one, where N is, or what, N is two and T is Y, okay? All righty, and that's that. Okay, example four. Randy wants to have saved a total of $200,000 by some point in the future. He's willing to set up a direct deposit account with a 1.2% APR compounded monthly, but is unsure how much to periodically deposit. So there's our periodic formula. So that is going to be B equals, and I'm sorry, not B, P. We solve for P. I'm not going to go through all that again. It's P equals B times R divided by N divided by one 
plus r over n to the power of n t minus one. Okay, so there's our formula solved for p, and we need to know what p is. We need to know what b is. Let me put b first. I like going in the same order every time. B, P, R, N, T. Okay, so he wants a total of 200,000. That is our B. We want to know P. R is 0.012, it's right here. And compounded monthly means 12 times a year. And but is unsure how much periodically deposit. He doesn't know what to deposit every period for varying lengths of time. Graph a present value function to show the present values for any situation from 12 months to 240 months. Okay, so 12 months is one year and 240 months is uh, 20 years. Okay, so we're going from one to 20. That's what that means. So we're going to um, substitute in our givens. So P is going to equal $200,000 times 0 0.012 divided by 12 over 1. Let me do two parentheses plus r over n to the power of n t, okay? Actually, I don't need the 12. Whenever we're doing this, let me make that smaller and get that out of there. And this is going to be the power of x minus one, okay? So there's the formula. And then we're going to put that in our graphing calculator. So let me get that. And I'm not going to put it on my home screen because we want to graph it. So I'm going to turn my calculator on, clear it, go to y equals, clear it. And I'm going to put this in. So it's going to be 200,000 parentheses or times. Yeah, let's use parentheses. Let me do parentheses for the whole numerator. Uh, let me insert a parenthesis at the beginning. So there's 200,000 times 0 0.012 divided by 12. That closes the parentheses for this fraction, and that closes the parentheses for the numerator. And then we're going to divide by, and I'm going to do double parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.012 divided by 12 close those parentheses to the power of x, get out of the exponent, minus one, close the parentheses and hit enter. I'm going to go to my window. I want my x minimum to be zero and I want my x maximum to be um, that 240 months. So let's put 240 in. Y minimum is going to be zero. And then the Y maximum is going to have to be adjusted. So let me see. Um, well, how much did he say he wanted? He wanted $200,000. So we have to try to figure out what value that's going to get to. So let's just go with 20,000 and hit graph. Okay, so there is our function. All right, so it's coming from a maximum, it's coming down and it's approaching zero. So the more money you put in, obviously, the less time you need to graph it. So if I transfer this graph over with my x and y axis labeled, it will look like this. So from zero to 240 months and graphing up near 16,575 coming down, okay? So the 16,575 would be a value when X was close to a particular number. So if I hit uh, trace, 
That's how we get our values here. All right, so if I scroll back here and as X decreases, Y increases. Okay, so the less number of months, the more money you've got to start with. So if I'm only going to do this for 12 months, I need about $15,000. And as it decreases to 10 months, seven months, five months, two months, zero months, well, let's go to one month. So if I want to do that, I want to go second, calculate a value and let X equal one, then I would need $200,000. Second, calculate a value and let's try two months, enter, then I need 9,900. So we're really close to $200,000, the less amount of time we need. Okay, so here is the graph of that function. So check your understanding says, how might the graph change if the interest rate were higher? Okay, well, the interest rate is right here, 0.012. So if you aren't sure, you could go into your calculator, go back to your Y equals and change your interest rate. So this is 1.2%. Let's go up to 5% and make it 5% instead and make sure you change both. So go over to this 1.2 and change it to 5% and hit graph. Okay, it looks like the same graph because we don't know what our um, values are, but notice what's going to happen here. The closer we get, it's going to get to our goal faster. So if I now calculate a value at say two, okay, that doesn't look like it changes much, but um, if I trace it and come down, what's it doing? Okay, the interest rate, the amount we need decreases faster. Okay, so what we would say is the higher the interest rate, the lower the present value needed to attain the future goal, okay?